Can Mob and Teruki save Ritsu and the other children from the Awakening Institute from the Evil Claw Organization? Find out in my review of Mob Psycho 100. Psychic Whips, Pyrokinesis, Living Wooden Dolls, Super Strength, and a guy who looks suspiciously like Psycho Mantis from the Metal Gear Solid series. This last couple episodes of Mob Psycho 100 were certainly a pleasant surprise, and as made me realize that Mob Psycho 100 is definitely one of the biggest anime hits of 2016. Not only does the show just have an amazing sense of humor behind it, and it's not afraid to go into some dark territory, but also has some of the most explosive and ridiculous action that I've seen from just about any other anime series, and it really always manages to kick it up to 11 whenever Mob is involved. Not only that, but the stakes have certainly been raised now that we've been formally introduced to the Claw Organization, which essentially is like the evil Akatsuki of this series, where essentially their plan is to take over the world with all of their powerful psychics. And they have a certain organization which is known as the Scar Group, which is like the upper Ecleon, according to to them of the actual organization and they're called the scars because each of the individual members has a scar somewhere on their body typically on their face and these guys are pretty freaking awesome they all have really crazy personalities and a lot of really cool abilities the thing is though mob and teruki are just like obnoxiously powerful and they manage to just bust right into the claw headquarters and just continue to start to waste the entire organization and you know what it looks really damn awesome when they're doing it. One of the biggest events from these last couple of episodes is we get to see Mob have his big rematch with Koyama, which is not so much a rematch as it is a curb stomping. Before we get to some of the major battles from these episodes, I have to say that the Claw organization themselves are really interesting. There's a lot of great characters for you to get attached to, and initially they make them seem like they're going to be one of the darkest turning points for the series. At first it seems as if they're actually going to try and torture all of these kids from the Awakening Institute and even go as far as to actually killing them one by one and showing the dead bodies to the survivors. This at first really freaked me out. It wasn't until I realized that the guy who was actually doing this, a member of the Claw organization, was actually using his psychic powers to put these creepy projections into the heads of all of these kids. And it wasn't until Ritu decided, you know what, we need to get the hell out of here. We have some really crazy psychic powers, we could probably hold our own against these goons. Let's bust out and kick some ass. And they do, and they end up sending Team Rocket flying, if you know what I mean. Some of the biggest battles from these episodes were done with a lot of style. Just watching Teruki and Mob actually go to the headquarters for the first time was great when they were confronted by this one member of Claw by the name of Tarada who made use of these psychic whips which were essentially just lightsaber whips but they look really awesome the battle that they have in the forest is fantastic especially with them flying all over the place but what I'm most impressed about is when this guy is actually defeated Teruki is actually able to learn from this guy and even creates his very own psychic whips Teruki is becoming one of my favorite characters from the series, although it is still very hard to take him seriously with his frickin' Marge Simpson hairdo. That being said, the most recent episode of Mob Psycho 100 was basically just a feast for the eyes as we get to watch both Mob, Teruki, and even Dimple, who's possessed the body of this one security guy, as they go in and they go up against individual members of the group. And they all have some amazing powers. The guy that Dimple goes up against in particular is awesome. I believe his name was Matsuo. He's a very creepy looking character, and his abilities are that he's actually able to contain demonic spirits within like these little bottles, and he can release them and command them like they were like his own attack animals. They're basically his own super. Pokemon. His battle with Dimple is surprisingly awesome. I also love the fact that Dimple always manages to outsmart him, although he eventually is defeated by Matsuo, but then again, this guy is definitely one of the bigger upper guys in the Claw organization. As for everyone else, they pretty much all get their asses completely handed to them. Teruki has this one great battle where he goes up against this one pyrokinesis guy who just completely lights up this hallway. Just Everything is getting completely incinerated, and he basically tries to steam Teruki to death because he gets trapped with all of this, like, steam within his barrier, and if he doesn't get out, he's going to suffocate and die. The problem is, if he gets rid of his barrier, he's going to be burnt to a crisp by all of the fire around him, so what he does is, he actually creates this barrier, which contains all of the fire, trapping this guy in it, and just completely incinerating his ass. 
There's also Ritsu who's going up against some other random members of the group, in particular this one kid who goes by the name of Sho, who may or may not be a member of the Claw organization and a part of Scar. He doesn't seem to have a scar on him whatsoever, and it's implied that he's incredibly powerful as he manages to defeat Ritsu off screen, and they seem to be building up his character quite a bit. He's also very young when compared to a lot of the other members of Claw. That's not to say there aren't young members. Hell, one of them is this one creepy little girl who has the ability to create an army of wooden puppet clones, which I'm assuming are strong, but, you know, against Mob, it doesn't really mean anything because just like a lot of the other characters in these episodes, she also gets defeated off screen, but she gets a little bit of help from her big sister, this one chick who, man, she can throw one hell of a punch. I love a good, well-animated anime action punch, and when she initially punches Mob in that episode, damned if isn't awesome, because she just flies off of this wall after being pushed back by Mob's psychic abilities, and when she actually hits him, there's this, like, huge explosion wave, which just has everything around it just explode away from Mob, and she just completely wails on him, but still Mob just makes a fool out of these guys, completely destroying all of them, and it even gets even crazier when he discovers the defeated boss Body of his brother Ritsu and he's confronted by that one member of Claw who has this dangerously large chin and he's the guy who actually created all of those crazy illusions and he tries to get into the head of Mob but this ends up biting him in the ass as Mob is able to go 100% with his power because he loses his shit after seeing his brother and he doesn't even do anything he just like powers up everything around him is crackling and exploding and all of this just like gets sucked into this guy's body which just completely knocks his ass out. Safe to say these last couple of episodes were pretty freaking action-packed and incredibly satisfying. I did not expect this type of action from a comedy series and I cannot wait to see what they're gonna do for the big finale because we're this much closer to the end of the first season and I only pray that there's going to be a second season because Mob Psycho 100 has officially reached One Punch Man levels as far as I'm concerned. So what's the rundown on these couple of episodes of Mob Psycho 100? I almost didn't know what to say about these episodes. I really wanted to take my time and re-watch them and really just sort of analyze what was going on in these episodes when at the end of the day it basically just made me realize it was just a big spectacle just getting to see a lot of crazy action from Mob who still continues to be one of the most intriguing main characters I've seen from a main series the fact that he's so incredibly powerful and he doesn't really want to use that power and yet now he's in a situation where he is forced to do that especially going up against the Claw organization which hilariously enough they say that they're the upper Eklion like the toughest guys in the organization, but they are all just getting their asses spanked. I mean, not even just by Mob. Teruki himself is really impressive in battle and is so far probably one of the strongest psychics that we've seen from the series. I mean, we're not counting Reagan or anything, who may or may not be the leader of the organization, although that's probably just a joke at the very end of the episode and the preview for the next one. Dimple also really surprised me in this episode. At first, I really didn't care for the character of Dimple because I'm not really a big fan of, like, anime sidekicks, like really goofy looking characters who are just there to be funny, but he has just enough of a snide personality and he's also just so underhanded when he fights that watching him fight is really interesting because you're always wondering, how is Dimple going to get out of this one? How is he going to bullshit himself out of this battle? And it's always really fun to see that go down. As for the members of Claw themselves, I think they're all really awesome. Of course, I really want to see what the leader Ishigoro is going to do. He's the weird male or female with a gas mask. I don't know what that thing's deal is, but I just love the overall design of that character, and I can't wait to see why he is the leader and why that one is, like, leading everyone. But still, there are a few other members we haven't seen in action quite yet, and uh, I imagine that things are really going to come to a head as we get closer to this finale. Some epic battles are definitely going to happen. We might even get to see a big combination attack from both Ritsu and Mob. I have a feeling that it is coming, not to mention the mysterious character of Sho. So... Great couple of episodes right here. That's really all I have to say about them. Just they were action-packed, they were expertly animated, and they just had a lot of amazing funny moments and some fan freaking tastic action. I loved these episodes of Mob Psycho 100, and you should definitely check them out if you're a fan of the series. It'll get you really pumped up for the finale of the end of the first season. Both of the episodes that uh, I reviewed a 5 out of 5, I thought they were both fantastic. They had some great moments, a lot of shocking moments, like when they made you seem like all the kids were actually going to be killed, and then all of that amazing action that followed just 
Ah, check it out, Mob Psycho 100 fans. You're definitely going to see something you like. If you did like these episodes, make sure to tell me what you thought about them in the comment section below. If you didn't like these episodes, tell me what you thought in the comment section below. What was your favorite action scene from these last couple of episodes? What's the deal with the Claw organization? Do they have a bigger ulterior motive in plan? Will one of them actually be able to stand up to Mob and his incredibly destructive power? What do you want to see from the rest of Mob Psycho 100. Thank you guys for watching this review. I truly appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and check out all the cool links we got in the description box below. Like our weekly podcast show, The Powerful Nerdcast. Yes, that's right. It's pretty frigging awesome. Thank you guys again for watching. And as always, stay dandy, baby.